Hello, my name is Izzy Lorena. Welcome back to Mindful Motherhood Monday. This is a place for all parents to stop, reflect and discuss about parenting and to think about our own parenting experiences and share with other parents who are also interested in this dialogue. And in this video, I want to talk about self-care for mums and dads as well. I'm going to share five tips to get started with self-care. If you find it daunting, if you don't know where to start, if in your mind self-care looks like a very unachievable thing, I hope you take something positive out of this video, something that will encourage you to take action towards your own self-care. Please give this video a like and share it with a friend who you think might need a little bit of self-care in their lives. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post Mindful Motherhood videos every Monday and I also post on Fridays as well. So now let's get straight into the video. So we all know that being the best mum that we can be requires us to be the best version of ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to make intentional choices and sometimes changes in our lives to look after ourselves. Unfortunately, we can't do what our children do and just snap our fingers, dash out orders and be taken care of. So we have to take action and you have to put yourself on that to-do list and preferably on top of that to-do list. I find that there are usually two categories that we fit in as mums when it comes to self-care. Either the mums who are desperate for some self-care but just have no childcare or no time, or the ones who feel really guilty if they take any time for themselves to look after themselves and for self-care. And I find myself fitting into both of these categories multiple times, depending on what's happening in my life. So it's not exclusive, you're either one or the other, but I do find that these are the most common barriers for self-care. But whatever type of mum you are, or whatever your situation, the truth is without self-care, we can easily burn out and find even the smallest day-to-day -day activities a chore or even feel resentment towards our children, our partner, our friends who have time for self-care. And so from my personal experience, when I dedicate time for myself, I feel like I have a lot more clarity, I have more patience, I have more time for my children, and I feel like a better person and a better mum to my children. And that's why I decided to make a priority for self-care in my life when I could see the benefits of it, not just for myself, but for my children as well. When I take just a few minutes for myself every day, I feel like my head is so much clearer and I deal with the challenges that we face on our normal day-to-day -day lives with a lot more patience and presence of mind. So now I'm going to share five tips for you to get started with self-care and hopefully take all those barriers down, stop putting difficulties for self-care and start making an effort towards using self-care to feel better and to be a better parent. And this video is going to be in two parts. The second part of this video will be next week, so next Monday, and that will contain some practical self-care tips for busy mums, mums who don't have childcare. And so if you're in a situation now where you're desperate for some self-care, but you just don't have the time or the space or the anything, next week's video will have a few practical tips of what you can actually do to have self-care when you don't have time and you don't have childcare. But in this video, I'm gonna share my five most important tips to get started, to get your mind in the right place for self-care. So the first tip I have and the most important tip is to turn self-care into a habit. It's something that needs to be in the diary, like the kids' swimming lessons, ballet lessons, any after-school clubs, parents' evening. Self-care needs to become a habit, and it needs to be something that everyone in the family knows it's happening for you. It's your activity. Everyone has their activities, you have to have yours as well. And once your family knows that it's happening, they will stick to it because they will know to expect it. And it will no longer feel like a treat. It will be your activity. It will be the thing that you do and everybody respects it and then it becomes normal. So that is my first tip 
make it a habit and make sure that everyone in the family knows about it. My second tip is a way to make you stick to your self-care plans and that is to make plans with other people because you're much less likely to give up on an appointment if you know you're going to disappoint a friend. So when I am feeling like I want to go for a run but I might give up later on in the day depending on how tired I am, I usually message my friends straight away and if she says that she's coming that way I know I'm committed to go for a run with my friend and I will not cancel unless there's an actual situation or something that I cannot make anymore. But making plans with friends is a great way to help you stick to your self-care activities. And if you're just getting started with self-care, that will be the first stumbling block that you hit will be to stick to it. You'll find that you'll do the first and second times okay, fine, but then things will get in the way, life will get in the way, and all of a sudden you're back to where you were before, where you just don't take any time for yourself. So maybe find a friend who's in a similar situation to yours, struggling to find time for themselves, and commit to using that time to make each other stick to your own self-care. My third tip is to stop apologizing to your kids for taking time for yourself. And this is something that I have to practice more often because when I was thinking about the topic for this video, I realized how often I apologize to my kids for going to the gym, going for a run, for going out to get my hair done or my nails done. So it's time to stop apologizing for making yourself a priority. Think about the lessons that you could be teaching your children here. You're teaching them that it's important to look after themselves, that friendships matter, that having interests matter, that hobbies matter, that feeling good about yourself matter, that exercising matters. So instead of saying something like, sorry, mommy has to go to the gym, you can say, do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to have loads of fun exercising in the gym. And that way you're teaching your children that having fun is important and that looking after yourself and your body and your mind is important. Our children are never too young to learn about self-care and they learn a lot from what we do and what we say. So it's really important that you make sure that your narrative lines up with what you're trying to teach them. My fourth tip is don't let it feel daunting. Self-care is anything that makes you happy, fulfilled, relaxed. It doesn't have to be a spa day. It doesn't have to be a weekend away without the children. It doesn't have to be a whole day spent in the salon getting your hair and your nails and your pedicure and facial. It can be anything that makes you happy. So if you don't let it daunt you, I bet that you can find lots more opportunities in your day for self-care. And my last tip is to ask and offer. And I think this tip applies mostly if you have a husband, a partner, a wife, a boyfriend, but it can also be between two friends who are in desperate need of self-care. You can commit to asking and offering help to each other. It's so important to recognize that your partner also needs self-care. And if you ask your partner to look after the children so you can go and have some time for yourself, make sure that you return the favor by offering to look after the children so that they can have some time for themselves as well. That way you're both recognizing that you're equal parents and you both need time to recharge and to feel refreshed. So these are my five self-care tips to start your journey to looking after yourself more, taking some regular dedicated time for yourself and feeling like you're on top of things, not feeling so overwhelmed, feeling more patience, more present in the moment because you've had a minute or a moment or an hour for yourself. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to tune in next week to see my practical self-care ideas for busy parents and parents who don't have any childcare. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below letting me know how you're feeling about self-care at the moment. Do you find that you have enough of it or do you feel like you need to start looking after yourself more? Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel and I will see you very soon. Bye.